Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Monday, August 25th, 2014. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's jump right into the charts here. We're going to start with the S&P 500 E-mini futures. You're going to see that the futures are trading higher this morning by about seven points to 1994 and three quarters per contract. Uh, an open like this should put the spiders over 200 this morning. And you're going to see that the spiders are trading just above the 200 mark, a very psychological number. Cash S&P should open above the uh, very psychological 2,000 number. So we'll see how that all plays out once the opening bell rings. However, um, the market seems to be getting a little bit excited over a Mario Draghi speech saying how they're going to be uh, potentially uh, providing more out-of-the-box stimulus to the European Union and I think this is uh, helping the markets at least at the moment but this should not uh, be a sign of strength or viewed as a sign of strength in my opinion so I'd be very very careful today um, especially into tomorrow uh, with with this kind of uh, rhetoric that's going on over there in Europe so when I looked at all of the European markets this morning uh, they're all trading higher German DAX is up about 1% the French CAC 40 is up about 1.2% uh, England, which is not part of the European Central Bank functions, they can print their own money. They have their own central bank. They're basically flat on the day, unchanged, actually down about three points this morning. So we don't want to make much out of that. But it looks like uh, the U.S. market is taking the European lead at least before the opening bell. But I'd be a little bit getting a little bit concerned up here with the uh, S&P being where it is and um, the catalyst that is providing that move higher. So again, be a little bit cautious today. I would be at least. Uh, I'm not sure how much more upside this market has in the cards. All right, let's talk about some stocks in the news. Uh, there's some mergers out there or at least potential mergers. The first one I'm seeing is uh, <clears throat> Intermune, ITMN, is being bought out by Roach today. So this year is uh, flatlining now. If you own Intermune, congratulations. Um, just trail your stop loss. But um, this is a takeover. This is probably just going to go sideways the remainder of the trading day, right around the $73 level. This stock did close at $53.80. So it's a tremendous pop there uh, for Intermune. That's about a 36% premium, $19.5 pop. Uh, from the close. So if you own it, congratulations. If you don't own it, you don't want to do anything with it. If you own uh, Roach, which happens to be R-H-H-B-Y, um, the stock is selling off a little bit. Again, it, it may trade down to around 3450 That's where I'm seeing support for R-H-H-B-Y, which is Roach holding. So again, Roach not showing a lot of strength, but that's uh, common when they're the acquiring company. So again, if Roach goes down to around 3450, 3455, right around there, that's where you could probably look for a bounce in Roach intraday. So keep that on the radar. We also want to look at Tim Hortons today. They're being uh, supposedly uh, bought out by Burger King. Um, so Tim Hortons, um, which is Canadian based, uh, is being bought out by Burger King. The stock closed at $62.84. On Friday, it is now trading at $72.40. Did trade as high as 74 bucks. This probably chops around in this area, but nonetheless, um, I wouldn't do much with it. I would not be a buyer here. Again, if you own this stock, you really just put a, a, a trailing stop loss in and you try to ride it out. And, uh, you know, it's a great move. Stock closed at $62.84. It's at $72.50 at the moment. Tremendous, tremendous pop. And that's on the speculation that Burger King is going to buy them. Let's take a look at BKW, which is Burger King. And that stock's also catching a bid. Uh, the stock closed at $27.11, now trading at $31. Uh, I don't know how much upside is in Burger King, to be honest. I wouldn't touch Burger King with a 10-foot pole here at these at these levels. But uh, either way, uh, the stock is up, and they're the acquiring company buying out uh, Tim Hortons. Let's take a look at Ann, which has been in the news recently. Uh, Ann Inc., as it's called now. Uh, the stock is being acquired by several activists, I believe. So uh, that's the reason for the move at the moment so you're getting some activist pressure activists have taken hold I would not buy the stock at all I think there's a ton of resistance at $40 as you can see that level has already been deflected if it can get through 40 
then it could have some real potential upside. But right now, 40 looks like a wall of resistance in my opinion. And again, activists or you know hedge funds are involved there, and they're saying the company could be broken up or strategically you know handled in a different way. Basically, they have ideas to get uh, more cash out of the company. You know that's 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 what we see a lot of these days. Um, call it financial engineering or, or whatever else you want to call it. But um, again, uh, that's the reason for the pop in Ann Taylor. So if you own Ann Inc., uh, try your stop loss. Stock is already starting to pull back. Let's take a look at Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs uh, was in the news over the weekend. It looks like they settled. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Goldman Sachs announced a $1.2 billion settlement with the Federal Housing Finance Agency. Um, again, this is going back to the mortgage-backed uh, securities deals back in 2006, 2007. Uh, again, it's just the cost of doing business. This is not going to affect the stock price as far as I'm concerned. The stock does. Um, if it does trade higher today, it can go up to 179 178.80, somewhere in that vicinity. So, um, again, Goldman paying a fine. Anytime these companies pay fines, it's usually a positive because they've just got one less hurdle to clear to do more business, um, regardless if it's in line or not. So, again, Goldman paying a fine, I believe, like I said, $1.2 billion settlement. It's not that big a deal. It's just a cost of doing business for them. Let's take a look at Kihu, which is... Uh, a Chinese internet play. This stock has been on fire recently. Uh, today it is coming under a little bit of pressure. So again, uh, you want to be a little bit careful with this one at the moment. Um, right now, if I'm looking at uh, the news here, um, I'm not really 100% sure why it's uh, it's selling off, but nonetheless, um, it is coming down. A level I have for you here would be $90.50. Also, $89.45. So those are some levels you can look to play Kihu. Uh, stock selling off a little bit. It's not a big fall, but the stock did close at $101.75. Now trading at $97.35. But like I said, the only level I'm going to get interested in it is around $90.50, potentially $89.43. So those are two levels I'll be watching today if the stock does trade down there. Let's take a look at U.S. Steel. Um, which is very, very strong today. Again, this stock has been an outperformer lately. Uh, right now, the stock's trading at $39.24, closed at $37.81. Now, I would not be a buyer of U.S. Steel at all at this stage of the game. I would be extremely cautious, extremely uh, skeptical. The stock um, is making a pretty sizable move, but all in all, um, it has had a big run already, so be very, very careful with U.S. Steel. This is coming on an upgrade, I think, from Credit Suisse. Who cares? Um, either way, the stock is up. Anytime a stock that has had this kind of a move gets an upgrade, you be very, very careful in the marketplace. Can it go a little bit higher? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I'm not really sure exactly where it wants to go, but um, I could not chase this with your money. So again, do not be a buyer. Do not be buying U.S. Steel up here at these levels. We'll be looking for a pattern in the intraday stock room to see if this thing can top out and give us a topping signal and potentially we'll even look to short trade it. But um, I would not be a buyer of U.S. Steel at this point in time. Um, some equities you want to keep on the radar today. Gilead Sciences, just because the bio sector seems to be hot this morning, you also want to watch Celgene. And any small biotechs out there are likely to get some type of a bid. So, again, you know, mid 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 range bio caps, billion dollar bio caps, or, or biotech stocks, I should say, are all uh, suspect to uh, catching a bid due on that uh, due to that Roach buyout of Intimune. So keep that on the radar. A lot of times, stocks will trade up in sympathy with other stocks, and um, you saw that here at least initially early. And now Celgene is pulling back. But nonetheless, the stock is still positive on the trading day. All right, let's go over to some uh, some commodities here. Gold is trading down $1.20 to $1,279 an ounce. So gold futures down a little bit. Let's take a look at the GLD. GLD is sitting um, right at this 123 level. Has a lot of support still at 122.50 if you ask me. Um, we'll see where it goes. I don't see a good pattern yet to own it, but uh, nonetheless, this is what we are looking at. Uh, if you're looking at oil today, oil, oil futures, and I'm talking about the October contract, 
Oil futures right now are trading uh, higher by just four cents to ninety-three dollars and sixty-nine cents a barrel. Let's go to the USO, which is a good tr proxy for trading light sweet crude, and you're going to see that this is trading at thirty-four dollars and ninety-seven cents. It closed right around this level on Friday, so no real movement. The only level I see for USO is around thirty-four oh five, thirty-four oh six. So that I would not be getting in front of oil right now. Oil has been very, very weak. Uh, recently, despite all of the geopolitical events that are taking place in Russia and the Ukraine, also in the Middle East, um, we're not really seeing oil show any strength. So that is not a sign of relative strength. It's a sign of relative weakness. Again, we got to look for oil to go lower before we could play that. With that being said, everybody, I think I've covered everything I wanted to get through today in today's video. I want to wish you all a great trading day. And again, we'll see you all on the charts.